Welcome to my series on learning 3D LUT Creator. Now in the last video I mentioned that this week we might cover workflow but actually I thought it more prudent to put that off for another week and cover the very last tab that we haven't covered yet that involves color manipulation. And that tab is the 2D curve tab and it's really a pretty wild one. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Now, if you're new to this series and would like to see the prior videos, or if you'd like to refresh your memory on some of the topics, I'm going to leave a link up above to the Learning 3D LUT Creator playlist. And if you find content like this useful, I would truly appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. On to the video. So today, let's have a look at the 2D curves, which is another tool for color grading. So if we go over to that tab, well, I guess by now we're getting used to interfaces that are totally bizarre and unfamiliar in 3D LUT Creator. Like the channel mixer, the results you can get from 2D curves are a bit unpredictable. But also like the channel mixer, there are some rules that it follows. And more importantly, you can get some pretty neat and interesting results. By the way, I'm going to leave a link to the Channel Mixer video above in case you're interested in reviewing that. These three grids actually represent side projections of the sides of the cube that make up the RGB color space. So when you move a point on the grids, you're actually moving and pushing all the colors that lie behind it in three dimensions. Needless to say, it's very difficult to think about color in three dimensions. It's just not something we're used to doing. And it's equally hard to represent those three-dimensional changes on a two-dimensional screen. I've heard it all explained, and if you think about it long enough, it all starts to make sense, but I've never really found the explanations helpful in letting me predict the outcomes of moving a point on the grid. So, rather than deal with the explanations, I'm just going to demonstrate to you the rules, such as they are, to let you use the tool. And it really is a very powerful tool for working with color. So I've brought this image of the wizard's hat from Bandon Beach, Oregon into 3D LUT Creator. So what happens when we start moving points around on this grid? Well, you can pull points up, down, left, right, or actually anywhere in between. So let's see what these points represent. To start with, the middle column down any of the three grids represents the neutrals. Now the white, as has been the case in all the other grids we've looked at, indicates the representation of all the colors in the image on that particular grid. So what happens if we start moving points? Well, I'm going to grab this point, and if I move it up, what happens is that any of the colors associated with that point get brighter. The color itself doesn't change, but it gets brighter. Now, because nothing was pinned, it's also pulled some other points up with it. And so therefore, the colors associated with those points tend to get brighter as well. Now, if I pull downward, same thing happens in reverse. The color doesn't change, but the colors associated with this point and any other point that's dragged down with it gets darker. Now I'm going to reset that. We could come here, for example, and either pin just the neutrals as we did on the CL grid. Or if we want really fine control, we can even pin all the points. And then if we were to select a point, we could far limit the number of colors that become either brighter or darker. Because in this case, only that one point will move and it will not drag others with it. So let's reset that. And why don't we unpin the points? And again, right here, you can pin the neutrals, the center, or unpin them if you'd like. Let's reset. Now, 
What about moving left and right? That's when things start to get really interesting. So I'm going to grab this point, and you'll see that as I start to move left or right, the colors start to change. Moreover, the further out towards the edge that I get, the more saturated those color changes become. And as you can see, because I've unpinned everything, a whole lot of other points are moving along with the point that I've selected. And you can see, depending on the grid that you choose, the color changes can be very different. So the elephant in the room is, how do we know how the colors will shift? So let me tell you the rules, and like I said before, I'm going to skip the explanations. Just recognize that it's not random. There are rules that it follows because you're actually pushing and moving things on the 3D RGB color model cube. So let's get to the rules and see if we can do a little more in terms of predicting how moving these points will shift our colors. Now you might think that the colors would always turn into the color indicated in the direction that you're pushing. For example, you might think that if you took this point and pulled this way, that the image would get more red. And you might think that if you took this color and pulled this way, the image would get more blue. But that's not exactly how it works because of the previously mentioned three-dimensionality of these color spaces. So how do you figure it out? Well, I can tell you that in the top two grids, they're half right. And that is the right side of each of those two grids are correct, as indicated. What do I mean? If you take this point and you pull it this way, the image is going to get more blue. And if I take this point and pull it this way, the image is going to get more red. But what about these left sides and what about the bottom grid? What happens then? Well, here we go. I'm going to show you. If we take this point and pull it to the left, the image gets more orange. If we take this point and pull it to the left, the image gets more blue-green. If we take these points and pull to the left, and I'm choosing the center point, but it would be any point that you pulled in any direction towards the left, you're going to get the image more green-yellow. And if you pull that point toward the right, you get more purple or magenta-ish. Now, if you want to remember that, you can certainly take a screenshot of this and keep it next to your computer to remind yourself. And I really should mention that if we wanted to make finer changes, we could come up here, pin all the points, for example, and make changes only to very specific colors. Obviously, I'm accentuating these much more than I normally would, but you can make changes related to more focal colors. I'll reset that and unpin. So let's now have a quick look at two ways that one might use these grids. The first way that I use the 2D grids is the most obvious for color grading. Now, when I was demonstrating the color changes you can make by moving the points around before, I made really drastic changes to show what the effects were. But in real life, just small movements of the points go a very long way. So I just made a very quick color grade of this image and then turned off each grid using these power buttons that let you turn the effect of each grid on and off. So let's turn each one on one by one and see what I did on all three of them. So on this first one, I took this point and moved it to the right a very small amount and up a bit. Now that should make the image a little bluer and perhaps make these blues a little bit brighter. So I'm going to turn that grid on and you can see the effect. Off and on. 
So a little brighter and a little bluer. Now let's come to this second grid. And this is the point that I moved. And I actually just moved it very little. And I moved it down the slightest bit and to the right a slightest bit to darken some of these reds up a little bit and make the reds a little redder. And there it is off and on off and on and you can see the main effect is down in here off and on now on this third and final grid I actually took this point and pulled it out to the right a little bit to add a little bit of purple to give it more of a twilight or evening look let's have a look by turning this point on this grid on and there we go, off and on. And so you can see that the point movements were actually fairly small. Now, interestingly, let me just point out this slider. And at default, it's set at 100, so that any change we make is at 100%. But it's a bit like an opacity slider in that if we turn it down, and you can see the percentages here, we can change the opacity or the strength of the changes we've made. Now, interestingly, unlike the sliders in Photoshop, the slider goes up to 200, which means we can actually intensify the change we made if we want to. So it really gives us a very nice range of adjustments that we can make and, and allows us to fine tune those adjustments. We want to turn that down a little bit. At any rate, if we come up here, we can turn the entire effect of the 2D curves on and off. So this is our color grade. We can turn it off. And we can turn it back on to see what we've done. So another thing that the 2D grids are very useful for are painting color into blown out areas. So I brought this photo, which is from a kind of lefty overlook in the Smoky Mountains into 3D LUT Creator. And you can see that there are these areas that are blown out, and this area which just has sort of an ugly grayish look. And I tried playing around with this in Photoshop, and it was actually pretty difficult to try to make any corrections to that. So let's see what we can do here in 3D LUT Creator using these 2D grids. Well, if we run our cursor over these areas, you can see the little X on each of the three grids that show where that color lies on each grid. And I'm going to be looking in particular at this grid. Why this grid? Because I want to make some areas more orange. And as you'll recall, if we move points out to the left of this grid, they're going to get more orange. Now, if I come down into the fog, we can see, based on where the X is, that the fog truly is a neutral. And I'm not going to want to change the color of that. So for that reason, I'm going to come over here and pin the neutrals. That way the fog won't change color. Now, if I run my cursor over these areas, you can see that here, here, and here really represent some of these areas. So I'm going to select these points. I'm going to hold down control and select these three points. And let's move them down a bit. And what that's going to do is darken these areas. Plus, because by moving them down, I'm sliding them to the left, those areas are going to get a little more orange as well. So let's, let's give this a whirl. I'm going to pull this. And as you can see, uh, they are getting more orange and darker. Now, I can't obviously add detail to them because, you know, there's no detail there. They're, they're blown out. And this looks fine in here. This I might still want to make a little darker. So I'm going to deselect these points. And this corresponds with the highest of these points. I'm going to pull this one point down some. If 
maybe pull this point up a little bit and pull this point down some. And let's see what we have by turning this on and off. So you can see we really added some color and a little darkening to these areas here. Now th this particular area was really very blown out, so there's just no rescuing that. But I think we've made some improvements to the image again, off and on. As another example, we can also tint neutrals that are not blown out. So for example, here we can see that these clouds, the whiter portions of these clouds, truly are neutral by seeing where they lie on the grid. And you can see they're lying on the neutral zone. So let's pin the neutrals. So we just move the ones that we want. We want to take some of these brighter ones, for example. And again, we're going to concentrate on this grid because moving colors this way will give us blues. So a lot of the clouds seem to be at about this point. And so if we just move them a bit to the right, maybe we want to move this neutral point to the right a little bit. And let's turn that on and off. I actually like them without the tint, but you can see we can take the clouds or any neutrals we want and give them a bit of a tint as we wish. And if we want, we can even come down and take that point and brighten those, brighten those clouds up a little bit. Well, I'm pleased to say that we've now covered all the color manipulation tabs in 3D LUT Creator in terms of how they work and what you might do with them. We haven't covered the masking tab. That doesn't involve color manipulation, and we can deal with that a bit later. But I think next week we might start looking at workflow finally. And I know I've asked before, but once again, if you find content like this useful, I truly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, giving it a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.